Okay, it's recording. Welcome to Revision with Julie. <laughs> Today, we look at Hamlet. Hi. Um, let's just, this just came up basically um, in a lesson this morning because we were looking at Paradise Lost. And we were looking at the section where Eve softly withdraws her hand from Adam and goes off to work alone. Um, but he keeps staring after her. And I was asking my classes, does this remind you of the bit in Hamlet where Ophelia recalls to her father the, um, the, like, the, the little closet scene, the, the, the unbuttoning. So... Let's just remind ourselves of what's happened in Act 2, Scene 1. We've had a very, a very different view of Polonius, haven't we? He's been instructing Ronaldo to go and spy on his son. Um, it's, it's presented in a very unsavoury way in Branagh's film version. If you remember, uh, we see a prostitute leaving his bed and uh, we see uh, Ronaldo being played by someone who's really quite seedy and horrible as well, because Branagh's really going for that emphasis on the corruption at the heart of Elsinore, that everybody's involved in it. In, sh in stark contrast to, um, is it the National Theatre one with Papa Residu? The... They don't have that. <coughs> no, they do, their Polonius is just lovely actually he's the only polonius i've ever been bothered um about dying he's just presented as a lovely dad doing his best for his kids so ophelia enters da, da, da. here we go oh my lord i have been so affrighted as i was sewing in my closet lord hamlet with his doublet all unbraced no hat upon his head his stockings fouled, ungartered and down jived to his ankle. Pale as his shirt, his knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous in purport as if he had been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors, he comes before me. So let's imagine now that this is the scene that you're going to get for your exam. Our introduction, so our section A for, um, for the OCR exam, focus on AO2, and our introduction would contextualise it, would mention that we've um, just seen Polonius. So we, we're seeing Polonius in, in his role as a father in two very different ways. How does he father Laertes and how does he father Ophelia. How does he parent them might be a better way of putting it. I assume he fathered them both in the same way. How does he parent them? Um, would anyone like to offer any ideas before we go any further about how we could use that as our AO1 to start us off? No, do we need to get into the text a little bit more first? Okay, well... What's, got, what's the significance of Ophelia disclosing that she was sewing in her closet? It's a bit of a contextual thing, but I think we can do a language bit on it. By closet, we don't mean she shut herself in the wardrobe. She's got a candle lighting away, doing a bit of cross-stitch. What, does, what kind of pursuit is this for a woman? Like a, traditional one. a traditional one? Good. Private. private. It's private. He should not have access to her closet. So, clothing, as we know, very significant. So, he's unbraced, he's fouled, he's ungartered. And then, what's this bit reminding you of here? Pale as his shirt, his knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous in purport, as if he had been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors. 
Right, reminding us of the ghost earlier. What do we need to ask of this section? What do we need to think about with Hamlet here? Why has why he done this? Why has he come into her private room looking a mess? To give the impression that he's mad. So that word impression, so do we think he's acting here? Yeah. Right? So that's something that we could discuss. Is he acting? What happens here to the sentence structure? What would you comment on in terms of AO2? There's, some, there's something different, isn't there? I've got lots of commas here and then. And with a look so piteous in purport as if he'd been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors. Oh, you lot are in trouble, aren't you, next year? Go on, so tell me, that's a nice answer, Robin, but what AO2 technique should we use to support that, Jack? Enjoyment. Enjoyment. Why are you so reluctant to use these words? I don't get it. It's like you're allergic to them or something. Or do you only have, can you only use like five a day? Have you got a quarter? <laughs> Why then? Okay, so here's my next question. Why all the slowed down punctuation? Why then move to enjambment? What's it doing to Ophelia's speech? Robin suggested, I think it was Robin, that it's because she's frightened, so she's kind of gabbling. What else might it be doing? So our AO2 here is actually about punctuation. Nothing? Nothing at all? I'm not, I won't do it for you, I'll just move on. Think about who she's talking to. Think about what she's telling him. Why, why does it go from being a list of things to, a, what, do, okay. What's the difference between what she describes here and what she describes here? In these lines, she's talking about his clothes. In these lines, she's talking about his words, body language, his, his, his manner, his like state of mind. Listen, I, I could walk in, and probably I do quite often, I walk in and you're thinking, she's got a jumper on back to front, or she, why hasn't she brushed her hair? Or, But you wouldn't necessarily assume from an English teacher having a scruffy appearance that I was in any danger, or would you? You wouldn't make that assumption. So here... Because that might be it. Maybe I've, maybe I've buttoned my cardigan up wrong. Or I've got a jumper on back to front or inside out. But here, the list, is it, it's ev almost every bit of his appearance, isn't it? It's, not, it's not, just, not just that he's not wearing a hat. It's all of it. And with a look so piteous in purport. What's going on there? Right, stop it now, you're annoying me. A or two, piteous in purport. Thank you, Ella. Some alliteration? Yes? Do you know, we met with a college last week, I think I told you this, and we talked about the different marks that we get. On this question, well, on the two questions, their average mark for their cohort is 13 out of 15. Do you know what ours is at this college? Nine or 10? Because you refuse to do that bit. You refuse to engage with the AO2. And it worries me greatly. 
because it's not what I thought we're not asking for like anapests and trochees and all of that difficult stuff we're talking about the stuff that you've been doing since primary school and you've got to be able to talk about it confidently and about its effect as if he had been loosed out of hell well what does that tell us what about that word loosed what could you replace it with escaped released so what does it suggest he looks as though he's been in hell doesn't it not that he's going there not that he's worried as if he had been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors does he speak He doesn't, does he, Thomas? He doesn't speak at all. So, all of that, there's a lot to unpack. Polonius replies, mad for thy love. What, what do you think about that as a response from, from your father? Oh, my God, Hamlet came in. Um, he didn't have a hat on. His stockings were falling down. He, he, his knees were knocking together. He did it. Does he fancy you? It's completely inappropriate, isn't it? But it's not just inappropriate. What else is it? It's almost like he thinks that she's always on her own. So there could be an element of her being an hysterical female. What else? What does Polonius always want to be? At the top, he wants to be right. So is it about him saying, oh, well, I'm sure you must like you? Is that already in his head an opportunity for him? Um, I don't know about opportunity, but he likes to be confirmed that his ideas are right. What's he going to do after this? What's he going to set up? Spying. The spying. What's he going to make Ophelia do? Yes. Go on, Millie. What's he going to make her do? And return the love letters. Yes. My Lord, I do not know, but truly I do fear it. What said he? Again, he doesn't speak. Why is that important? What, what's one of the big themes of this play? Hamlet's right. Yes, good. You, you're, all, you're almost there, Grace. So what does he do? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then he goes to the length of all his arm, and with his other hand thus o'er his brow. He falls to such a perusal of my face as I would draw it. Long stayed he so. At last, a little shaking of mine arm, and thrice his head thus waving up and down, he raised a sigh so piteous and profound as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. That done, he lets me go. And with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes. For out of doors he went, without their helps, and to the last, bended their light on me. Okay. Right. I need a volunteer to be here. I need a volunteer to be here. All you have to do is stand in front of me. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> right. So, you're a failure. I've grabbed you by the wrist. 
right? How long am I holding him by, holding Ophelia by the wrist for? Oh, hang on. Oh, I can see his. That's better. That's better. How long am I holding him by the wrist for? Her by the wrist for? Quite a while. Quite a while. Quite a while. In fact, first of all, I'm like this, and then it seems to suggest that I'm like this. Like I want to go, but don't want to let go of you. And I've kind of gone off somewhere. How do you get me to let go? What does what does Ophelia do? Shake she shakes her arm. How many times? Three times. Oh, I imagined it more up and down, but you know, you, you just go with that. And so that kind of brings me to my senses, and then I start to leave. But I don't take my eyes off you, and I seem to find my way. Woo! How the nerd looks. And out I go until even as I go around the corner, I bend my light on you. Right. Why? Why does Hamlet do that? That's a bit weird, isn't it? What's he doing? Okay, that's part of an answer. Danielle, any thoughts? Right, dominance, focus, interesting. Oh, I missed the big sigh, didn't I? The. Oh. After this scene, will Ophelia and Hamlet have a straightforward conversation ever again? No. They will not. It's almost like, uh, like showing it three times that the scene doesn't look like their relationship is kind of ending. And then right. Right. afterwards, like explain to you, like he's been like rejected. So you should try and find a conflict in the Right. I like that. I like that. What is Hamlet? Right, so, okay. I'm just conscious of time. Hamlet wants people to think he's mad. Who's the biggest gossip at Elsinore? Polonius. What better way than to convince people that you're mad than using the symbolism of clothing, a very simple and quick fix, invading private space of a woman and of a woman who you are purported to love. If you can convince her that you're mad, then you can convince anyone. And guess what? He knows that she's a good daughter so what's she going to do? He uses her to get the message round. However, let's suggest that he really, really does love her. And so the reason that he keeps looking at her until he leaves is to fix her image in his mind. That he wants to just keep her in the, the last vestiges of their love he wants to maintain in his mind's eye. Go on, Danielle. Is that not necessary? It's more like a pleading sense. More pleading, yeah. Go on. So, like, he's looking at her for that last chance of, I have, like, he knows he lost his father. Yeah. He's looking at his mother's corrupt. Yeah. He's looking at her for that last, before I do this, is there anything that can save me? Yeah. So that way, we could have a much more sympathetic view of Hamlet. I mean, remember that we don't get to see this. This is Ophelia telling her father. I can't remember now. Does, is it shown in the Branner as a flashback? It's a long time since I've watched the Branner. I maybe need to subject myself to that again. Yeah. 
But it's, to me, it's very poignant. To me, it's actually quite a romantic, loving, tender moment. I, I, that's, again, that's my AO5. That's my reading of it. That's how I would direct it. It doesn't have to be like that. Either way, though, Ophelia's still being used. Um, we haven't done much AO2. Um, we've got the bit about... Cause it, I mean, this is... He, he looks at her face so long as though he's going to draw it. So he wants to, to make a copy. Um, we've got shatter all his bulk and end his being. Well, if we take that as a metaphor, to, and what's being ended is sane Hamlet, because he's going to pretend to be mad from this point on, or, as many interpretations have it, he does become mad. Is that a metaphor for, like, that Hamlet dying? He seemed to find his way without his eyes. Is there anything symbolic there? How could that be symbolism? What's he trying to find? What's he trying to find out? The yeah, the truth. So is this part of that journey that he's going to have to um, use different methods? He can't just look for the truth. He's going to have to use different methods. Come, go with me. I will go seek the king. This is the very ecstasy of love, whose violent property for does itself and leads the will to desperate undertakings as oft as any passion under heaven that does afflict our natures. Having heard all of that, Polonius is still stuck on this idea that it's the ecstasy of love. Oh, I've just, um, I don't know if you've got the Arden, but my notes are telling me as well, and to their last bended their light on me, um, is similar to Orpheus's last look at Eurydice. Someone's excited, aren't they? Um, when, he has to, when he has to leave her behind in the underworld. Ecstasy, a state of mind in which, from whatever cause, reason is in suspense. So ecstasy there, I mean, it's appropriate, like for modern readers, that it links in with love, but it's actually usually um, a form of madness. Um, a state of ecstasy, like a state... Uh, have any of you do, done um, uh, Wilfred Owen, Dulce de Coramest? An, um, is it an ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time? And that word ecstasy always seems a bit wrong, but it's that, it's that heightened emotional state. <coughs> I am sorry. And then a pause. What's he sorry about? Sorry. You know, we, we started talking about how he parents... Ophelia and Laertes. It's the only point where he's offering her any kind of comfort. She's obviously upset. I'm sorry that you've had to experience this. I'm sorry that I let this happen. And then he says, what, have you given him any hard words of late? And no, my good Lord. But as you did command, I did repel his letters and denied his access to me. That hath made him mad. I am sorry that with better heed and judgment I had not quoted him. Observed. I mean, this is a whole play about watching and looking, isn't it? Spying. I feared he did but trifle and meant to rack thee. But beshrew my jealousy. I don't think we need to worry about that word. Um, it means more mistrust. I don't think. I don't think it's dodgy. By heaven, it is as proper to our age to cast beyond ourselves in our opinions, as it is common for the younger sort to lack discretion. Come, go we to the king. This must be known, which being kept close might move more grief to hide than hate to utter love. So if we conceal this, 
it's it's liable to have uh, to result in in badness. I think I need a cup of tea. Um, I don't mean badness, do I? Um, more harm will come from concealing this. I'm interested in this little bit. I don't know, is he just contradicting himself again? It is as proper to our age, does he mean his literal age, like an older man, to, to cast beyond ourselves and our opinions, as it is common for the younger sort to lack discretion. It's a very odd expression, isn't it? Um, because one of the things that Polonius doesn't like to do is ask other people's opinions. His opinions are always right. And then he's saying that younger people lack discretion. More, m might move more grief to hide than hate to utter love. He, he hasn't really listened to her, has he? He's heard what he wants to hear. He's about to send someone off to spy on Ronaldo and spread rumours about him to say bad things. So, to, sorry, he's about to send Ronaldo off to spy on Laertes. Um, he's a thoroughly disagreeable character. What I would suggest that you do next in your revision is to focus maybe a bit on Polonius and Ophelia. Think about that idea about how he parents. Or thinking about parenting in general. That would be a nice question to come up next year, wouldn't it? Parenting. Mm. Yeah, I like that. How do you feel about Ophelia? Do you want to look at her in a bit more detail next week? No? Are you happy on Ophelia? Is there, is there a character or is there a focus you'd like to have for next week? I've picked the last two. A bit more on Claudius. I don't think that one's comparing myself. Mousetrap. No, I'm the one before. The one be... So... What? Pie room? Pyrus. That one, yes. Right. Okay, that's a, that's that's a good call actually because that's that's a tricksy one, like the gravedigger scene coming up, isn't it? If they wanted to be tricksy again and give us that, we don't want to be caught out there, do we? Thank you very much everybody.